Module 3, Session 2. Session 2 will cover the following content. Learning Outcome 2.3.2. Solve linear programming problems by optimizing a function in two variables using the search line method. Learning Outcome 2.3.2. Solve linear programming problems by optimizing a function in two variables using the search line method. The aim of doing linear programming is to find the optimal or best quantities to use. Usually, we try to maximize the profit or minimize the costs or materials used. Let's look at the steps to solve a linear programming problem. Step 1. Write the constraints as inequality statements in X and Y. Remember the implicit constraints too. Step 2. Draw the inequalities as straight lines. Remember that some may be solid lines and some dotted lines. Shade the feasible region that will satisfy all the constraints. Step 3. In other words, ask the question from the real-life problem. What must the maximum or minimum value be? Step 4. Find the optimal solution using either a table of vertices, this was covered in level 3 maths, or the search line method. This is the method examined in level 4 maths. Let's look back at our beadwork situation. We have drawn our constraints and found the feasible region. Now we are told that we need to optimize the amount of profit made and that there is 10 rand profit on each bracelet and 15 rand profit on each necklace. This gives us the objective function, which is the total profit. The objective function is thus. Profit is equal to 15 multiplied by y plus 10 multiplied by x. The best solution always occurs on one of the vertices of the feasible region. We have now labeled our vertices A, B, and C. Let's calculate the profit at each vertex to get the maximum. This is the method students used in level 3, and they probably did it in table form. To do this, we simply substitute the x and y value from each vertex into the objective function and calculate the profit for each pair of quantities. Remember, our objective function is profit equals 15y plus 10x. Point A has coordinates 40 and 100 which gives us a profit of 1,900 Rand. Point B has coordinates 40 and 40, which gives us a profit of 1,000 Rand. Point C has coordinates 100 and 40, which gives us a profit of 1,600 Rand. So our maximum profit is at A. In conclusion, to maximize the profit, the optimal number of bracelets and necklaces to make is 40 bracelets and 100 necklaces. At level 4, students need to use the search line method rather than this trial and error vertices method. A search line is a moving line with the same gradient as the objective function. We move it through the feasible region to find the minimum and maximum values to solve the problem. How to use the search line method? Step 1. Write the objective function in the standard form of a straight line y equals mx plus c. Remember that m gives the gradient of the line. Step 2. Use the gradient of the objective function. Draw a dotted line with this gradient below the feasible region to intersect both axes. Step 3. Put your ruler along this line and slide it up over the feasible region. At each vertex, draw another parallel dotted line through the vertex. Step 4. Check where each line intersects the y-axis. The line intersecting at the lowest point goes through the vertex that is the minimum, and the line intersecting at the highest point goes through the vertex that is the maximum. Let's draw the search line for the beadwork example. Remember, our objective function was p equals 15y plus 10x. Rearranging our equation in the form y equals mx plus c gives us y equals negative 2 divided by 3x plus 1 divided by 15p. Thus, the gradient of the search line is negative 2 thirds. We draw a line with a gradient of negative 2 thirds below the lowest vertex. This is called our search line. We take our ruler and slide it upwards on the graph, 
parallel to our original line. As we pass through each vertex, we draw a line through the vertex with a gradient of negative two-thirds. This is a simple example, but it is clear that vertex A gives the maximum using the search line. The coordinates of this point give the quantities of the solution 100 necklaces and 40 bracelets. Let's return to the dairy problem we started on earlier. Please work in the same group as before and complete the problem, this time using the search line method. Here's the solution to the problem. So let us look at question number three. Find the profit function. Right, so the formula for that is P is equal to X plus Y. Now, looking at this, let's go back to our information. The profit made on full cream, which is my X value, is two rand. And on the skim milk, which is my Y value, three rand per liter. So let's use this formula. So Profit is equal to B to X, and then we have um, plus 3Y. And of course, that will give us P is equal to 2X plus 3Y. Now, that information is crucial because we can use that information to find the, the search line. And the search line is a line. So as we can see, P is equal to 2X plus 3Y. There's a straight line. We can get a straight line from that. Now let's put that into a straight line. If we want to put that into a straight line, it will be 3Y is equal to uh, minus 2X plus P. And you can see it is negative, meaning that um, our our search line will be will be will be negative. Okay, um, it will be decreasing. Okay, so let us find a straight line. Now we need to get rid of the three on this side, so it will be y, and this will be equal to minus two over three x plus P over, uh, sorry, that's P over, not X, P over 3, P over 3. Okay, what do we have now? The coefficient, can you see the coefficient of X? We have the gradient. We have the gradient of the search line. Let me just write that again. Y is equal to negative 2 over 3X plus uh, P over now, if you look at the graph, you will see that the graph, the numbers is 2,000, 3,000, and if you put down 2 um, and th uh, over 3, it will be a, a very, the, the, it's, it's, it's a fraction of what we have on our, our graph. So what are we going to do? We take, the, we take the gradient and we multiply it with a 1,000, and that will give us 2,000 over 3,000. And that will be the gradient for the search line. And once we have the gradient for the search line, we can draw the search line. And remember, we have this, the, the y value at 200, 2,000, sorry, 2,000, and we have our x value at 3,000. Okay, so let's quickly draw the search line. Just some dots, dotted line, to identify the search line. Right, so that would be our search, our search line. Now remember when you move your search line, and normally you, your students will use a, a ruler to move up and down. So you move um, one, one unit up, so it will be, for example, you will have 3,000, or let's move two units up. Two units on, uh, two units up, Right from here, two units up, so that will be, and two units this way, one, 
too. So that will be right over there. Just to show you basically how the search line is working, okay? So you can move up and down with your search line. And the search line is to find the maximum uh, profit or the minimum cost, whatever you're looking for. Right, so that would be like your search, your search line. Let's continue with the fourth question. Uh, here we have to calculate the maximum and minimum profit and the volumes to be processed for a minimum and maximum profit using the search line method. Okay, let's first establish what is our maximum uh, point and what will be our minimum point. Now remember we have the search line. The search line, the point that the search line touched the last, that will be our maximum. That will be our maximum point. And then we look at the search line. Remember it coming down. Here's the search line again. And the very first, the very first point that is being touched, that will be our minimum value. Okay, our minimum value. So let's use um, let's use our, our, our p uh, profit function, which was p is equal to two x plus three y. Okay. So let's start with the x value p, and now we are looking at the minimum profit. Okay, the minimum profit. So the minimum pro profit is the last, the first uh, point that has been touched. So let's look at this point. Can you see what is the x value? The x value is 1,500. So it will be 2 times 1,500 plus 3. And what is our y value? Let's look at our y value here. At the minimum, it is 500. Right. If we add all this up, it will be, the minimum profit will be equal to 4,500. Okay, so that's the minimum profit. Now let's look at the maximum profit. We're doing the same thing using the profit function, which will be 2x plus 3y. Now let's look at our graph. Can you see this is the maximum right over here? We have the maximum. And the maximum, our x value on the maximum is 2,000. So we have P is equal to 2 and 2,000 plus, and our y value here is 3,000. That's it, 3,000. So our maximum value, our maximum value, if we add it up, will be 30,000. So this will be the maximum profit. This one will be our maximum profit, and this will be our minimum profit. Let's check our answer to the dairy problem by calculating the profit at each of the vertices using a table. Here is our graph. Let's label the vertices A, B, C, D, E. The coordinates at A are 1,500 and 500, which gives us a profit of 4,500 Rand. The coordinates at B are 1,000 and 1,000, which gives us a profit of 5,000 Rand. The coordinates at C are 1,000 and 3,000, which gives us a profit of 11,000. The coordinates at D are 2,000 and 3,000, which gives us a profit of 13,000 Rand. The coordinates at E are 4,500 and 500, which gives us a profit of 10,500 Rand. Looking at our table, we can see that the maximum profit is 13,000 Rand at D with quantities 2,000 liters of full cream and 3,000 liters of skim milk. Our minimum profit is 4,500 Rand at A, with quantities of 1,500 liters of full cream and 500 liters of skim milk. This is exactly the same as we found with our search line. 
In the level 4 exam, students will be asked to use the search line method. Teaching tip when setting linear programming questions. If you allow students to choose any letters they prefer for variables, or if they use x and y for different quantities, you will find it difficult to keep track of all the variables when you do the marking. Simplify your life when you set linear programming exercises or tests by defining x and y for students. This will make marking much easier. Let's work through another example in our groups. This time, each of you should take one part of the activity and teach it to the rest of the group as you would to your students. This brings us to the close of Module 3. Thank you for your patience and concentration.